Facebook and Twitter. Twitter, I believe, was sometime in May of 2006 when it came into the world. Facebook had been around from 2005 to September of 2006 as a student in university-driven social media thing. In fact, the term social media wasn't even invented then. In 2007, we had a young college graduate join our company. She later became our marketing manager. And she says, we need to be on Facebook. And all of us older guys in the office were like, uh, what's Facebook? It didn't, it, we didn't know what it was. I was 35, the CEO of our company was 46. We didn't know, was, we didn't know Facebook. If we wanted to social media lies with people, we picked up the phone. And it wasn't even a smartphone back then, right? Because Apple didn't come out till later in the year. So we didn't have all that technology. She said, no, there's this Facebook thing. You can get young people and you can, we can create a page and we can have fans and we're going, it just sounds crazy enough it might work. And we let her make a Facebook page and it was just a really amazing thing. And it was a space we created for not to just actively always talk outward to people. We created the Facebook page for people to talk to each other. And we did very little engagement besides put it up there and say, and in the opening, hey, we've created this page for you. Please fill it up with stuff. Tell us what you're doing with our products. Tell us what you hate. Tell us what you like if you want, but we really don't want to know what you hate because we want to try and make things better. And just by saying we want to make things better for you, boy, the outpouring. We really love you, but this product isn't good for this. It isn't good for that. It isn't good for this. If I were to line up every pair of five finger shoes across the stage from the very first to what I'm wearing on my feet, which is our latest offering, besides that first one, every one of them is a direct result of consumer driven feedback. People telling us what they liked, what they didn't like, how they were using it, what they wanted new, what they wanted different. That is how we evolved our business. So that runs counter to what you hear from a very famous guy who ran a very big company that has a logo on the backs of most of your phones that I see out there and your laptops that are up and open, who said, don't let consumers tell you what to make because they're never right. You gotta tell them what they can, you can make for them. And we took the opposite approach. We just said, tell us what you want. If we can do it, we'll do it. It'll be fun. That's how we kept people engaged in our brand. So we used Twitter for a very similar thing. But doing this back in March and April of 2007, now a little more than seven years ago, was kind of like Web 2.0, which I think now we're up to like Web 5.0 or something, but that was really old school stuff back then. Now everyone, it's very ubiquitous. But you have to have Facebook, you have to have Twitter. But the caution I would give you is don't overdo it on the outward push because you will push people away. You want to pull them in and you want to keep them there. So we just kind of let people start, hey, send us pictures, send us stuff, and this is what happens. Next thing you know, there's this entire website called Birthday Shoes, which is dedicated to our brand. It's quite phenomenal. It was the ultimate fanboy project. We didn't expect it. We didn't ask to do it. He just kind of did it on his own and said, I love these things so much, I decided to make a website for it. He's now a big shot at Google, actually, this guy who did this. But that's the kind of engagement you want. If you have a product or service, how many people wouldn't want somebody to make a website dedicated to your product or service? Who wouldn't want that? Raise your hand. Yeah. Everybody would want that. That's fan loyalty. 